Relativity Space is trying to make the first 3D printed rocket Terran 1, and eventually the first fully reusable 3D printed rocket Terran R. For years now, they have been developing, manufacturing, and testing these systems with the goal of one day reaching orbit. Just days ago, they were the closest they have ever been. On both March 8th and March 11th, Relativity attempted to launch a Terran 1 test article for the first time. Unfortunately, a host of different complications occurred that were either out of the control of the company, such as weather, or technical issues that needed to be resolved that scrubbed both launches. Thankfully, Relativity provided a lot more insight into what exactly went wrong and how they go about fixing it. This is important as a third launch attempt will be scheduled very soon, likely only days away. All of this comes in addition to new milestones with Terran R's Eon R engine development and testing. Here I'll go more in depth into what caused the multiple scrub launches, new engine progress, when we can expect the next launch attempt, and more. March 8th was the first attempt for relativity, and early in the day they tweeted saying, Range green, vehicle is healthy, and we're progressing well towards launch. Not long after, they got a new T-0 time to allow them to work through thermal conditioning of their propellant. The scrub came after an abort at T-70 seconds due to oxygen temperatures on the rocket's second stage being outside of normal limits, but they were able to resolve the issue and continue countdown until the call to scrub. In regard to this first scrub, Relativity said in a quote that, Today's launch attempt for GLHF Terran 1 was scrubbed due to exceeding launch commit criteria limits for propellant thermal conditions on Stage 2. The team is working diligently toward our next launch window in the coming days. They also pointed out, when using liquid natural gas, the methane needs time to get to the right concentration. This is why our next attempt will be a few days from now. Thankfully, soon after the first scrub, they announced that the next attempt would be just days later on the 11th. Early in the morning on the 11th, they tweeted mentioning, we are go for prop load, which is getting underway, but upper level winds are a potential concern today and we are continuing to monitor. Within the next few hours after this tweet, there were multiple holds and countdown attempts with a few issues arising before the second attempt was officially scrubbed. Relativity commented that during abort number one, it was a corner case in the stage separation automation a few seconds before T-0 that properly aborted at T.5 seconds. Then, the team pushed an update to the vehicle automation, successfully recycling the vehicle and secured a new T-0 time which was an instantaneous window, given it was during the last minute of our launch window today at 16 ET. During abort number 2, at T-45 seconds, we had an automated abort on stage 2 fuel pressure, which was only 1 PSI low. While not ideal, it's important that Relativity doesn't rush the launch and make sure everything is perfect for the best chances of success. It also looks like the company was able to determine exactly what went wrong and are trying to make sure that they fix at least everything within their control for the next attempt. The Terran launch vehicle and pad systems are designed to accommodate a 1-hour countdown. However, longer countdowns may be coordinated as a non-standard service. Critical functions for both ground systems and flight vehicle are controlled by automated software during the countdown. Propellant and pressure and loading sequences begin early in the countdown, along with a series of vehicle, telemetry, and range checkouts, with verification of AFSS, transmitter activation, and transitions from ground to internal power taking place during the final minutes of terminal count. As far as when the next launch attempt will be, Relativity has not officially released a date yet. This being said, the company has airspace restrictions for the launch daily through March 17th. It's possible that within the next few days, we get an official date for the next attempt. Around the same time that Relativity is attempting the most important test in the company's history, they are continuing to make progress on Terran R. Terran R is fully reusable, including its engines, first stage, second stage, and payload fairing, and will be capable of launching over 20,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit in reusable configuration. At the core of this rocket's payload capacity and reuse options are its main first stage engines, Eon R. Since the beginning of this month alone, we have received a bunch of new updates from Relativity and Tim Ellis on this engine. Starting on the second, he tweeted saying, Achieved 100% power on Eon R thrust chamber assembly testing today, 258,000 pounds of thrust. Only one week later, he posted again highlighting, Meanwhile, ran two back to back Eon R TCA tests today at 100% power, both 25 seconds long. At article iteration 007 so far, this engine is going to be a killer, I think, for a reusable vehicle Terran R, truly among the most fast-paced propulsion development programs ever in the U.S. They included a video of the engine startup and fire for the entire 25-second time period. The company's engines, Eon-1, Eon-R, and Eon-Vac, are all 3D printed. This is supposed to enhance mission reliability by reducing part count in engine combustion chambers, igniters, turbo pumps, reaction control thrusters, and vehicle pressurization systems. All Eon engines, including Eon R, use liquid oxygen plus liquid natural gas, which are not only one of the best for rocket propulsion, but also the easiest to eventually make on Mars. To date, the Eon series of engines have completed thousands of test fires. 
Finally, just three days ago on the 10th, we got to see a complete EONR engine when Relativity tweeted, first EONR engine built complete, 258,000 pounds of thrust, human per scale. Here you could see the massive complete engine which will join six others to power Terran R. When asked whether or not that was the actual engine nozzle, Tim Ellis responded saying, no, real is region cooled, also it's larger and 3D printed. We have one built though. Currently, Relativity is still scheduled for the first launch of Terranar next year in 2024. While extremely ambitious, this fast progress could make the goal a reality if they continue at this pace. The results of Terran-1's first launch will also have an impact as well. In the middle of last year, Relativity signed a multi-year, multi-launch, launch services agreement, or LSA, with OneWeb. Under the agreement, Relativity will launch OneWeb's low-Earth orbit satellites on Terranar, starting in 2025. These launches will support OneWeb's deployment of its Gen2 satellite network which will build upon the initial constellation of 648 satellites the company is currently building out. Terranar will launch one web missions from Launch Complex 16, relativity site at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, where Terran-1 has been trying to launch for the last couple of days. As a medium-heavy lift, fully reusable launch vehicle made for growing satellite constellation launch demand and eventually multiplanetary transport, Terranar wants to provide both government and commercial customers affordable access to space in LEO and beyond. With the addition of its multi-launch agreement with OneWeb, Relativity has a total of five signed customers for Terranar, including multiple launches and totaling more than $1.2 billion in backlog. In other big news regarding this rocket's development, not long ago Relativity unveiled the latest iteration of its first-of-its-kind proprietary manufacturing platform, Stargate 4th Generation Metal 3D Printers. These printers will underpin both the development and rate production of Terranar. The newest Stargate printer technology defies traditional printing constraints by moving horizontally, as it feeds multiple wires into a single print head to print orbital rockets. Relativity points out that first, second, and third generation Stargate printers already operate at print speeds well beyond industry standards. The newest generation Stargate printers, however, improve on their predecessors and offer seven times faster than earlier generation Stargate printers, and even achieve up to 12 times faster printing over Relativity's already industry-leading performance. The majority of Terranar components will be printed inside Relativity's new 1 million plus square foot headquarters in Long Beach, named the Wormhole. EONR engines for Terranar will continue to be produced at the company's other Long Beach factory, the Portal. The wormhole, a former Boeing C-17 manufacturing plant, was secured by Relativity to be its new headquarters in 2021. Currently 33% operational, the factory has several new Stargate printers online with more than a dozen printers planned to be producing Terranar components in the coming months. At the full capacity forecasted run rate, each Stargate 4th generation printer is capable of producing four Terranar rockets per year. The remainder of the wormhole will continue to be built out in phases, bringing more printers online and moving more teams into the company's headquarters as production for Terranar scales. Relativity recently attempted to launch Terran 1 on the 8th and 11th. While the launch still hasn't happened, the rocket is still in good condition and they learned some valuable information that they will apply to the next attempt. This comes in addition to continued work and progress on Terranar's ENR engine. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.